read you just a well-known story here just for a moment. The book of John chapter number 8. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what saith thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have a reason to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. See, when your accusers go to the Lord, he just... Don't pay no attention to it. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin... Let him cast the first stone at her. And he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Verse number 11. She said, No man, Lord. Or they asked who. said, uh, Woman, where are thou accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn condemn thee go and sin no more one of my favorite shows I used to like to watch was a show called fixer upper they took these old homes and they'd go out and show them to people the people decide to buy them then they would fix them up they would take care of them here we find Jesus found the woman who needed repair found a woman that was in a in bad situation but he said I'm not going to condemn you I'm going to fix you up but the greatest fixer-upper of all time is the man, Jesus Christ. Whatever we have need of today, whatever our problems are, whatever our sicknesses are, whatever our shortcomings are, we can bring them to the real fixer-upper today. And He'll not condemn you, but He will take care of your situation. Let's worship the Lord today. Hallelujah. Well, let's put our hands together. We say risen. He's risen, forever glorified. Yes, risen, He's risen, King Jesus, King Jesus is alive. Hallelujah, oh Lord, oh Lord, hallelujah, oh Lord, oh Lord, hallelujah. Jesus, we lift it higher. We serve the risen 
I'm glad he's not dead. There are those that serve in God that will never answer them. But I serve a God who's alive and alive forevermore. And he still answers prayers today. Come on, let us worship him together. Come on, let us worship him with our voices, with our hand claps. Let Praise us worship the, Lord. the King of Glory. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and lift our voice to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just take a moment and lift up his name. He's worthy this evening. It's your holy name. God, I give your name praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel him inhabiting those praises here today. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and welcome the King of Kings into this house right now. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't, I'm not sitting here saying that I know that God just comes into a church whenever we do praise and worship Him. Maybe He's here before we ever get here. But I'm confident to know that if we lift up our praise and we magnify, we don't have to worry about whether God's going to be in this place tonight. I can't tell you. If you don't praise, I'm, I don't have a biblical precedent that says He's going to inhabit this house. But I do know the Bible tells us that if we'll lift up His name, if we'll praise Him, that He will inhabit. What an awesome idea that I can lift up my praise to Jesus and the King of creation will inhabit those and He'll be in my midst. Let's go ahead and give Him a hand clap one more time. Aren't you thankful? I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. The King of kings and Lord of the Lord is in this place. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. I'm going to take a quick poll, just real quick. If you've ever been physically healed by the Lord, you know God physically healed you. I want you to lift your hands real quick. You know God physically healed you. Just take a look around. Amen, amen. You can put your hands down. If you have been spiritually healed, that you know God spiritually healed you, I want you to lift your hand today. Look at the congregation, at how God has spiritually healed. If you've ever been delivered, of anything, if you've been delivered from drugs or alcohol or maybe depression or anxiety, I want you to lift your hand in this place tonight. Amen, amen. Thank God. If they came up with a, if they came up with a pill that healed 25% of cancer patients, it would be a miracle. If 25% of people that got cancer, if they came up with a pill and 25% of that people that took it would instantly be healed, the markets would be flooded with it, and everybody would be running to get it. If just 25% happened. I, I took a quick poll, and I can almost just by scanning across this congregation tell you that roughly 80 or 90% of the people in here for a physical healing. Roughly the same amount raised their hand for a spiritually healing, and roughly the same amount raised their hand for an emotional healing. I'm telling you, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. Hey, we'd be excited about 25% of people being healed of cancer. And there is 80 or 90% of the people in here that says, God's healed my body. We'd be excited if a psychologist could, could counsel 80 or 90% of his, or 25% of his patients. And they would go on and be better. And 80 or 90%. Of the people said God had emotionally healed me. I'm telling you, we're serving a great God that's able to do great things in our life. And He can meet every need that's in this house tonight. Amen. If you have a need, represent that by the uplifting of your hand. I know He's able because I've heard and seen the testimonies here tonight. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer. We're going to trust and believe for Him to do great things in this sanctuary tonight. Let's go to Him in prayer right now. God, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all that you've done for us. God, you've been a healer in so many ways to us. You've healed our body. You've healed our minds. You've healed our spirits. God, you've done an abundance of things for us. And we know and believe that you are able. God, with all the testimonies that have been represented in this place, we're overcomers by those testimonies. God, I'm encouraged to know that you're going to meet the needs of this people here. God, I pray right now that you would bless this congregation. God, if there's anybody here that needs to be touched physically, 
I pray in the holy name of Jesus that it would be done for your name's sake, for your glory. God, I pray if there's somebody here that needs their emotions touched today, Lord, I pray that the Holy Ghost would minister to him, them. And God, more than anything, if there's anybody here that needs to be touched spiritually, Lord, they need salvation, God. I pray that you'd let it be done in this house. We trust you and believe in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap. Let's continue to worship his name here tonight.
presence of our God and like the song says all is well with my soul just to know that we have a God who loves us tonight and that cares about us there is no better feeling in the whole world than to stand before his presence and feel like everything is going to be all right amen would you lift your hands and love him one more time tonight all across this building, lift up the name of Jesus. Don't be ashamed to praise Him. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. For everything. Thank You for everything, everything. Praise the Lamb of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We certainly want to welcome each and every one of you here this afternoon to the Promise Apostolic Church. We're so delighted that you are here. We're glad to be here. Amen. Looking forward to seeing what all the Lord is going to do today. You, when you serve an all-powerful God and an omniscient and omnipresent God, you just never know what God intends to do. We just want to be vessels that allow Him to work through, certainly. I want to take just a moment and say what a tremendous success that we had here this past Friday night. We hosted the uh, Tri-State District Missions America Master Rally in this place. And I just want to say thank you again to this incredible church for showing tremendous leadership. Thank you to those ushers that were outside with flashlights, parking people. Thank you to the music team who came Tuesday and early Friday, did a great job, and uh, we were just blessed to be here Friday night, and it was a tremendous, tremendous success. Uh, we also had the chance here to meet Brother and Sister Fallon, who are out of First Apostolic Church of Maryville, and they are beginning a church in Cleveland, Tennessee. And we are so delighted that the men of this church through our missions giving, we will be supporting Brother and Sister Fallon. This is uh, the first adopt -a city church that we will have the chance to support in the Tri-State District. So we thank God for that. Had a great chance to meet and hear from him. And I also just want to mention this, that when, when I, sometimes when I get up in the morning, Brother Rick, and I think that somebody's praying for me today, it just gives me a great feeling. It just propels me into my day I don't know who it is it could be brother Tommy could be brother Phil could be pastor brother Kevin brother Dustin but I just know somebody is praying and I thank God for brother Gary leading us and having prayers for the promise just know every day when you get up somebody is praying 
for you. And so we're thankful to be, amen, part of a tremendous church. It has such great, valuable people in it, amen, that are willing to do anything for the kingdom of God. Uh, yesterday was a beautiful day. We want to congratulate Brother Bubba, and Jonathan, and, and his wa new wife, Sister Maddie. It was a beautiful wedding. We offer them our congratulations. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. Let's, they're, they're on their honeymooning. Amen. But we're so glad for them. Amen. And uh, we, we did receive some uh, great confirmation this week in an email our building is scheduled to arrive on the 12th of November and immediately begin to be erected. So this month, the month of November, we're going to see a building going up down there. Everything's going to change this month. Thank God. Man. Can you imagine what it's going to be like to be a part of the promise about 12 months from now? Isn't that going to be something? We're going to be in a brand new sanctuary. This is going to be a beautiful fellowship hall. I just don't know how many new people are going to be coming, people receiving the Holy Ghost. and Everything at the promise is getting ready to be better. I don't know how it could possibly be much better, but my spirit tells me things are going to get even better in the next 12 months. Praise God. Welcome our pastor with your hand claps right now as he comes. Well, let's give that to Jesus. I know we do it every Sunday, but let's give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Bible says the name of the Lord is to be praised. You might not feel like doing it. You may not feel inspired to do it. You may not want to do it. But from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. I like what I feel, and I feel what I like. Amen. And Brother Steve Hamer preached to us uh, Sunday. Uh, it's about time. That's what I was thinking when Brother Mike said the building's going up. Uh, amen. Appropriate for last Sunday's message. It's about time. Uh, but we're so, we're so thankful. Uh, Brother McCool caught me in the back uh, Friday night and he said, Brother Lovelace, what I learned through our building program, what the Lord said to me was enjoy the journey and enjoy the process. He said the children of Israel weren't originally designed to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. He said, but we preach a lot of neat stuff out of that. <laughs> Amen. So he said, enjoy the process. And I said, Bishop, I appreciate, uh, appreciate that word. Uh, Amen. And no, no doubt we're going to have plenty of testimonies and stories to tell from the process uh, of us building our new sanctuary and we're thanking God in the good and the bad and the slow and all that God's in charge amen we're thankful amen we're glad to see all of you sometimes when you mess up you don't get a second chance to fix it last Sunday we had a guest here and I didn't think to well I won't say a guest just a, uh, a family member we hadn't seen in a while and I didn't think to the end of the service to recognize them and I thought shucks I, I should have recognized that individual uh, but sometimes you get a second chance brother Rick Thomas we're glad to see you today <laughs> amen amen he's not a guest we just hadn't seen him in a little while but two weeks in a row we're glad you're here today brother Rick glad to see you amen we're glad to see everybody we're going to ask our ushers to come we're going to receive your tithes and offering unto the Lord this afternoon thankful for another privilege to bring our tithes and offering to God amen if you'd stand in preparation of giving it's an honor and privilege amen thank you sister Sherry it's an honor and a privilege to bring our tithes and offering to the Lord brother Greg would you ask God to bless our tithes and offering today
Amen. And our ushers will assist you in giving this afternoon.
Man, the Lord bless you for your giving. You may be seated. Um, I felt led today. We don't do this often on Sundays, but from time to time, uh, we will call on someone to share something. Uh, maybe a little out of norm for us on Sunday, but I'm very proud of a young man in our church, Nicholas Gilbert. Uh, he has uh, just done so awesome since coming to church. He was a great young man before he ever showed up. Uh, but what God has done in his life, and he is so hungry for the Word of God and for truth, uh, and uh, at least on a weekly basis, if not several times during the week, I'll, I'll hear from him. And uh, he, It's obvious that he's talking to others because he's asking me for answers. Uh, and I think it's just awesome that he has such a zeal and a desire to share the Word of God. And so I asked him this afternoon if he would just say, I told him he could take 30 sec seconds or two or three minutes, just whatever he wants to do. But I felt led to have him come and, and just talk to you a minute. Welcome him. He's going to come and share a testimony with us today. Praise the Lord. Praise wow. The Lord. What a beautiful crowd. Wow, look at that. Well, let me just let me just tell you about a little bit about my walk. I was I was raised Baptist. I, I knew who God was. I knew who Jesus was. I knew that you know there was something else. Like I, through that time, I, I could feel there was something else with the 18 years of being Baptist. But about the time from when I was 14, I started feeling broken. I started feeling lost and that I didn't have, I didn't have the answers, that all the answers weren't in, in the, the Baptist church, in my home church. So I started looking for answers through the Beatles, through music, and, you know, just things of the world type, type things. And, yeah, and the Lord used one of my great friends, Hannah Blair, in my life, and she came in right when I needed her, right when I was on the edge of going down the wrong path. She, she came in, she was obedient to God, and she brought me into church. And let me tell you, I know I was here for a reason, but once I got the Holy Ghost, I was filled with a purpose. And I can promise you that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He 
picked out my grave. His plan had to break me away. I had driven so far. Would anyone care that I just be lost? Oh God, I knew my destruction was a matter of time. But Jesus appeared and saved me on his mind. Now I'm safe from all harm. God, yes, He did look in for me. Thank God, He came looking for me. Well, He made a way when there was no way that I could see. When I drifted far, Jesus was here. He rescued my soul. But I guess I'm going to testify. I'm not so sure. I was raised in the church. I was raised in this church in this way. And I thank God for the heritage that I've had. Brother Nicholas, you came along a little later. But you know, somehow, some way, what I thought I, what I had wasn't what I thought I was looking for. And I made a choice, an active choice to start looking another way. I had the Holy Ghost. I got it at five years old. And I thought I needed something else in life. And I, cannot, I can't let myself think about the words sometimes because it's hard. I'm not able to not sing that second verse because my voice is trash. I can't sing it because God has changed my life. And I can identify with a moment when I walked away. And by all rights, I shouldn't have a chance to be up here. I would not have an opportunity to speak on behalf of God or to sing His praise behind a pulpit. But God came looking my way. And I don't care where you are today. I don't care what you've done, where you came from. God is looking for you today. And He's able to change it. And God can turn it all around. And He can make it like it never happened again. Old Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had been forward to break me away. I had drifted so far. Would anyone care that I belong? And I knew my destruction was a matter of time but Jesus appeared and said this one is mine now I'm safe from all harm since I met the one who came looking for me yeah he came looking for me he came looking for me thank you Jesus well he made a way but there was no way that I could Jesus was here. He rescued my soul from all my fear. I'm safe from all harm since I left the one who came looking for me. Come on, let's all testify without the music. He came looking for me. He came looking for me. He came looking for me. Come on, let's be one big choir for a minute. He made a way when there was no way. That I could could see When I drifted far Jesus was was near near. He rescued my soul And calmed all my fear I'm safe from all harm Since I met the one Who came looking for me Y'all sing it one time Y'all sing it Say He came looking He came looking for me I know he made a way that I could see when I drifted far Jesus was near to rescue my soul and calm all my fear now I'm safe from all harm I met the one who came looking for me Brother Brian Peters, aren't you glad he came looking for you? (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo. You may not know how it feels to be out there somewhere and thinking nobody cares. Oh, but one day Jesus came looking for you. Some of you may not know how that feels. Oh, I'm glad he came looking. I said, I'm glad he came looking. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bible said he came in the cool of the day looking for Adam and Eve. Where are they? Praise God. Amen. If you would, just stand with us. I thought about you, Brother Larry, when they were singing that part about did anyone care that I'd soon be lost? Boy, the old devil wants you to think that nobody cares. Amen. Amen. Like Brother Larry Ragsdale. Amen. Sometimes he comes looking for you and he'll send somebody like Brother Larry with a spiritual spotlight. Amen. I can remember Sister Shirley Jones coming by Italian Village. Just tell me she loved me. Jason Lambert come by and tell me he loved me. Don't forget that. Amen. Don't give up on people. Amen. If somebody lays, the Lord lays somebody on your heart, call them. Text them. It's easy now. I didn't have a cell phone. Brother Larry had to come get me. He did it too. Amen. Glad the Lord came looking. Aren't you, Brother Ricky? <laughs> Amen. Man, thanks for that song. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Brother Ben told me a moment ago that since 3.30 today, the Lord laid it on his heart to pray for me uh, for this afternoon. And uh, uh, I said, well, that was the Lord. I have felt some opposition uh, about what I'm going to share with you today. Uh, so uh, usually when I feel opposition, God about to do something good. What a great day uh, yesterday. Uh, beautiful. Just beautiful. I, I got up yesterday morning. It was cold and rainy and gray and ugly uh, and windy. It's a wonder she's here this afternoon. That, that poor lady has worked her uh, self to death this past week. And you know what? She's had rheumatoid arthritis since she was 36 years old. And uh, if you, they used to call that crippling arthritis back in the day. Uh, and that there is still no cure for it. They could treat it better than they used to, but she never complains. You never hear a complaint out of her. Uh, and uh, so that's, uh, she's had it a long time. I started to tell you how long, but then you know how old she is. She just, she just had a birthday, but uh, she's awesome. Uh, but uh, beautiful, beautiful day yesterday. My, my son and Maddie got, got married and uh, Many of you have said, well, I didn't know anything about it, or uh, I wasn't invited, and it was just sort of a small gathering of family and, and a few friends. That's the way they wanted it. Y'all know me. I'm like it. Y'all come. My, my mom used to get so frustrated at me. I just, we have family gatherings, and there's a whole other family there, you know, besides ours. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, it was, uh, that's, that's it. It's not big on standing everybody looking at him you know so that's the way they wanted to do that but I'm, I'm thankful uh, God's always working even when I don't see it even when I don't feel it woo wee he's working John chapter 3 Ben was singing that song he came looking for me Every Sunday, some of you may see me during praise and worship scanning the audience. I'm looking for folks. 
Amen. And if you're missing, I, I, I asked Alex Stivers while we was while we were shaking hands there a minute. God said, "Where's Brian?" Yeah. I didn't see him. <laughs> he said he's back there in the corner. <laughs> Amen. You're missed if you're not here, and when you are here, we're glad, we're thankful uh, that you are. Good to see Sister Robinette today. We, her work schedule keeps her from being here a lot. She and Brother Robinette, we love you all very, very much. Glad to see you today. Good crowd here this afternoon. Uh, this is just awesome. God's so good. I'm not going to preach long. John chapter 3. Somebody say bifocals. Verse 29. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. Now you think I'm preaching this because my son got married yesterday. I laid this on my heart. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom which standeth Amen. Somebody say, standeth. Friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Man, that preach right there, Lauren. The bridegroom's voice. Praise God. John the Baptist said, This my joy therefore is fulfilled. Go to Hebrews chapter 13. I am going to use a picture from the wedding yesterday. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit your... Now you know why I felt some opposition. This verse right here explains it all. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they that must give account. That they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes today on this thought. And it may seem scattered and like I'm chasing rabbits. I, I, I pray the Lord will just make it all come together. I want to talk to you on this thought. I must give account. I must give account. Isn't that a pretty picture? Look at old Bubba trying not to cry. And Lucas... He looks like somebody shot him. He is fighting tears right there. I must give account. Boy, the Lord's fitting to do something in here today. Hallelujah. Why don't we just lift our hands, everybody that would, let's lift our hands to heaven and ask God if He would bless us. Heavenly Father, I love you. I thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor. Lord, we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. God, we're praying you'd speak to us today. God, bless us. Bless us with your word today, God. Hallelujah. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. Oh, in the name of Jesus, speak to us. Oh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I feel something special beginning to stir in this sanctuary this afternoon. I wonder if we could praise Him here just a minute while we stand in this special anointing. Hallelujah. Well, the man of God told us Friday night it's the anointing that breaks the yoke of sin and bondage. Hallelujah. Thank you for the anointing, Jesus. 
Praise God. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The book of Hebrews is in just 13 short chapters full of amazing truth. Amen. In 13 chapters, it's just so full, really, of revelatory truth. If you'll go through and read the book of Hebrews, it's just, there's just so much revelation about truth and how the Apostle Paul, uh, about, about eight and nine chapters in, ties in that old covenant to the new covenant and the, uh, the, the sacrifices of that old covenant and how Jesus became that sacrifice in the new covenant and how if that first covenant had been faultless there would have been no place for the second uh, just so full the second chapter shares with us so great salvation amen the author says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation Hebrews chapter number 2 and then in the 6th chapter man of God, we presume to be the Apostle Paul, said, leaving the principles of the doctrine of repentance and baptism, the laying on of hands, let us go on to perfection. Amen. Not laying again the foundation of all those things, but go on to perfection. The ninth chapter, one of my favorite in the Bible, one of the greatest things God's ever shown me in scriptures, I studied about the death of the testator. Amen. And how it took the death of the testator to bring, to fulfill that old covenant, to bring the new covenant, the New Testament, the 11th chapter, the chapter of faith. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. 12th chapter, we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen. Let us lay aside all the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. and Let us run with patience the race. That's set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Amen. Amen. Hebrews is just full of so much great and wonderful revelatory truth. And then here in the 13th and final chapter, we find some very familiar passages that Many of us could quote, he says, let brotherly love continue. It's in the 13th chapter that we find Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. Amen. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Amen. Then here in our key text, very familiar passage, that preachers and passage, uh, or pastors rather, uh, in a lot of settings, really enjoy, <laughs> uh, they like to say it. I think I'm misunderstood by a lot of people. Uh, that, that's not a passage that I necessarily enjoy to share with you. Obey them that have the rule over you. For they watch for you so. Submit yourselves. Obey them. Submit yourselves. And the reason is for they watch for your soul. Now there have been men. I, I, I just said men because Brother Brian Ratliff, I don't want to use men of God too loosely. But there have been men over the years that have taken taken rule over you way too far. You've used it in an abusive way and, and, and have manipulated the minds and hearts of people to make those folks believe that they were somebody more than who they really were. Amen. The apostle Peter, when he met Cornelius, Cornelius fell on the ground and began to worship Peter. And Peter very quickly corrected him and said, stand up, I'm a man just like you. Amen. But there have been men throughout history who have abused 
that passage. Uh, Obey me. As if they were a God in those individuals and families' lives. But the Apostle Peter charged the elders to feed the flock of God not as lords over God's heritage. Amen. Feed the flock of God, but not as lords over God's heritage, but being in samples or examples to the flock. See, it's for reasons like that the Apostle Paul would write in his letters, I beseech you, or I entreat you. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a lord over you and beat you into submission or... Or, or make, make myself to be some sort of God in your life. But he would say, I entreat you. And, and I beseech you. And I admonish you. I encourage you to do this, that, or the other. The, the word of God said, obey them that have the rule over you. For they watch. Amen. I'm fixing to preach right here. They watch for your souls. That word watch means to be sleepless. It means to, to lose sleep, to watch, to be attentive and as if someone was supposed to keep watch. Maybe, maybe uh, we were outside and, and, and surrounded by the enemy and, and everybody needed to get some sleep. But it, someone was charged with staying awake to watch. And that's the connotation in that word right there, watch, to, to, to actually to lose sleep. To be, you're right, right, brother Ben, to be on the lookout. To watch, to be attentive, uh, uh, to, to, to really uh, uh, to, to, to make yourself uh, available to be troubled. Oh, I'm going to preach today. I'm going to be a pastor today. I wrote the man as I was writing my notes, and God said, No, I want you to put an in where you put that A. The men of God in your life, myself, not just the pastor. But all these men of God are to be watchmen in your life. Amen. Amen. We are to be attentive and to be awake, to be spiritually sensitive to the flock, to be sleepless. I cannot tell you, I cannot tell you the hours of sleep that I have lost because somebody would be laid on my heart. And I may not know why. I may not know what is going on in that individual's life. But many, many times, Brother Mike, in the middle of the night, wake up with somebody on my heart. Not knowing why. I was studying today. And, and, and somebody just came to me. I felt a heaviness. And, and so right then, I, I got off my phone and texted that person. Stop, stop studying for a moment. Uh, uh, to reach out to that person. But often... I felt troubled and don't know why. And more often than not, Sister Shay, I probably won't know unless that person doesn't respond to what I tell them. I don't feel good about you taking that job. Well, why not, Pastor? Why, why don't you feel good about me taking, taking that job? Or, or I don't feel good about you moving there. Or, I, I don't feel good about that friendship that's going on there. Well, why not? Why not? I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure why, why I don't feel good about it. I, I, I wish I could give you an explanation. And, and a lot of people start demanding explanations. I, I want to know. What, 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 what's the big deal? And, and so I try to, you know, well, maybe it's this or maybe it's that. But, but often we may never know why I felt what I felt unless you don't listen. I feel restless and anxious and troubled. When I think about it or I consider it or that situation comes into my mind, I feel anxious and troubled. may not be able to tell you why. But the Bible says obey them. That have the rule over you. For they watch for your soul. 
restless and lose sleep and trouble for your soul. You see, it's not about the job. It's not about an individual. It's not about a place. Well, don't, don't you like that person, Pastor? What do you have against me working there? Or what do you have? What, what's wrong with that part of town? Why wouldn't you want me to move there? It's not about a person. It's not about a place. It's not about a job. It's not about individual people. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. But it's about something much greater than all of those things put together. It's about your soul. And God will trouble me. And He will speak to me. And cause me to lose sleep. And I may not know what it is. But whatever it is, obey them. They have the rule over you. For they watch. I'm not watching for your job. I'm not watching. I'm watching for your soul. I told you I felt opposition. Thanks for praying for me. Hallelujah. I'm watching for your soul. I, I want everyone to succeed. And I want everyone to uh, excel. I, I, we, uh, th- we all want to see everyone prosper and do good in life. And, and be happy. And ha- have a good family. And have a good job. And, and be able to enjoy life. Hear me today. It's not about that. Uh, uh, but John said, I wish above all things. That you prosper. And that you be in good health. Even as thy soul prospereth. Amen. You can have a good job and have a good family. But if your soul's not where it needs to be. Then all that's for naught. And all that's for nothing. You can marry who you want to marry. You can have chips. You may get the job that you think you want. But if your soul suffers. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. And be in good health. Even as thy soul prospereth. Amen. We want you to be happy and healthy and wealthy in life. Amen. And and family and so on and so forth. But my primary objective is to make sure when it's my turn to present you before Jesus Christ, it ain't going to matter how much money you made. It's not going to matter how pretty or how handsome your husband was. When I, when it's my turn, when I would go before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and say, here he is, here she is, all it's going to matter then, did your soul prosper? Were you ready to meet him? Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Jealous over you with a godly jealousy. I don't know what it was about the church at Corinth, but Paul seemed to have something special for them. He said in verse 8, he said, I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. If you, if you go read that, he, he, he tells them, I, I wouldn't take anything from you. I robbed other churches that I could help you and bless you. I did for you what I didn't do for others. Oh my God, I could preach right there. I've had people jealous of some of the attention that I give to some others. Amen. Why didn't didn't you show my teenagers the attention you showed that one? Well, because you're right here with them. They might be here all by themselves. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach now. Amen. Paul, Paul said... For whatever reason, Paul had a special affinity for for these folks. And he said, I've taken from others to give to you. Jealous for you over with a godly jealousy. Why? Because I didn't love you? He asked him that. He said, wherefore? You think I didn't love you? 
And I've done what I've done for you. I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Brothers and sisters, we're on our way to a wedding. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 19 said, let us be glad and rejoice. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. And His wife hath made herself ready. We're on our way to a wedding. Amen. I, I couldn't help but sing, sit around my kitchen table today and sing. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see. I said we're on our way to a wedding. Amen. And one of these days. The Bible is not real clear about how things are going to work at the end. We don't know exactly how everything may work itself out there at the end. But somehow, some way, I don't know how it's going to work, Brother Larry. But somehow, in some order, I am going to present this church to Him. I, I, I don't know how it's going to work. You know, I, I may just be standing, all right, all right, Pastor Loveless, your turn. It's the promise's turn. I, I don't know. I don't know how all that's going to work. But somehow or another, uh, it's my job as the man of God in this church that one of these days after that trumpet sounded, I don't know if it'll be in that seven year uh, uh, time with the Lord there. Uh, or maybe it's going to be before the millennial reign or after millennial. I don't know. But at some point, Brother Rick Thomas, I'm going to stand before the Lord Himself. And I'm going to present this group of people to the Lord. I'm going to present the bride to the bridegroom. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Praise God. We're going to a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Right. God. Yesterday, a beautiful bride stood before myself, my firstborn son. And I asked this question. Who gives this woman to be married? to this man and her father said her mother and I I don't know how it's going to work how it's going to unfold but somehow some way I'm going to have the amazing opportunity sister Opal to stand before the Lord maybe he'll ask the same question I asked yesterday who gives this woman who gives this bride Amen. And, I, and with joy, I'm going to say it's me. Woo. Amen. John said in John 3 and 29, He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom which standeth. That stood out to me today. Which standeth. That word standeth means to make firm, to establish, listen to this, to cause a person or a thing to keep his or its place. The friend of the bridegroom stands. To cause a person or something to stand in its place. Listen, when I share what I share with you, whether it be corporately, like I am today, or whether it be on a one-on-one -on -one basis with you. Amen. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I, I, I'm not trying to, to, to mess up your life or, or, or to, where you can't enjoy whatever it is you want to enjoy. But what I'm trying to do is to keep you from losing your place. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Stand means to call someone to stay in their place. Amen. I'm a watchman. Amen. It's my job to be a watchman. Amen. Amen. And a shepherd, a biblical shepherd, when he had a fold, would always find a rock or a hill that he could stand on, that he could see trouble coming before the sheep ever... If the sheep saw the trouble, it was already too late. Amen. So the watchman would get a high place where he could see where the sheep might not be able to see so he could take them to a place, a, a 
of refuge before the trouble ever showed up. And a lot of times you get mad at me and upset at me about what I share with you. But I'm a watchman on the wall and I can see trouble coming before you're able to see it coming. And if you see it, it might be too late. That's why we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not trying to mess up your life. I'm trying to keep you in place. I don't want you to lose your place. The watchman stands firm. Amen. Amen. The friend of the bride, the bridegroom standeth. Amen. I don't care how unpopular it gets. Oh, I heard Tim Tebow. T -t 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 What's his name? Tebow, Tebow, T Tom, Dick, Harry, something like that. He was talking about people just wanting to be social media acceptable. He used the UT football coach situation a few years ago. They hired that one cat. You know, and social media went nuts. What's his name? Yeah, Greg Sean, y'all remember that? They hired that guy. Oh, social media went crazy. The UT was flooded with social media junk and this and that and the other, uh, and phone calls and so on. And so they turned around, hired, hired a guy and turned around and fired a guy. Amen. Right or wrong, as long as we're accepted. I don't care how social media unaccepted it is. I'm going to stand on one Lord. One faith. I said the watchman stands. And I don't have to agree with you to love you. But I'm going to stand in whatever it is. I'm going to stand on Jesus' name, baptism. I'm going to stand on the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence, speaking in a language you never learned. I'm going to stand on holiness. The friend of the bridegroom stands. Hallelujah. The friend of the bridegroom standeth. Oh, and I like this. And he heareth. I have heard, Jake, I have heard my bad brother Lovelace. Not my little brother in here. He's brother Lovelace. I've heard of churches, brother Gary, that work out a sermon list for the preacher. That's such a thing. Don't try that here. It won't go good. Amen. Hmm. Tell the preacher what he's going to preach. Deacon board gets together and works out. That, that goes on. And if you're watching, I don't mean to hurt your feelings. I'd go somewhere. Where the man of God prays and studies to hear the voice of God. I don't want to hear what the deacon board has to say about it. Or what the Baptist convention has to say about it. Or for that matter, what the ALJC or the UPC or the CBS. I want to know what God says about it. Me or any of these preachers up here, I, I you can sit down. I may have requested a message be re-preached. I, I may have before. I probably have, but I've I've never gone to somebody and say, "Look, here's this is going on, and, and would you preach on this particular subject?" I've never done that, and never will I ever do that. Amen. The, Brother Mike and Brother Phil and myself and Chase and Brother Tommy. 
Whoever mounts this pulpit, they've spent time with God. They've read the Word of God and they've studied and they've sought after the heart of God. Amen. Not only does the friend of the bridegroom stand, but he listens for the voice of the bridegroom. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And when that voice comes, John the Baptist said, I rejoice. We rejoice. Amen. Just like you've been doing, Sister Weezy, just like we've been doing here tonight, during this message, we rejoice at the voice of the bridegroom. Amen. You're not hearing a sermon from Big John. You're not hearing a sermon from John Lovelace. This is the voice of the bridegroom. Amen. That's why we rejoice. That's why we say amen. That's why we stand and lift our hands and say amen voice of the bridegroom he said the friend of the bridegroom standeth and he listens for the voice of the bridegroom and he rejoiceth at the voice of the bridegroom and he said this my joy is fulfilled hear me today this my joy is fulfilled. Paul said, Obey them that have the rule over you, for they must give account that they may do it with joy. That they may do it with joy. Again, I'm not real sure how all that's going to work at the end. But I can imagine, Brother Kevin, it's going to go a little something like this. Will you come up here, Brother Kevin? Here he is, Lord. I'm, I'm proud to, to tell you, God, that there was time in his life that he may not have pleased you, but I remember a few years ago, he came and repented of his sins. He was baptized in your name. He was filled with the... Does God know all that? Yeah, he knows all that. Amen, but I get the privilege somehow, some way of presenting. Somehow, some way. I get to, as a friend of the bridegroom, I get to stand before the bridegroom. Say, this young man, Lord, was, I know there was times that maybe he didn't do everything right, but God, he, he loved you and he gave his heart to you. And I remember when, when he went down in Jesus' name and he was filled with the Holy Ghost and, and, and God, he was met with some opposition and folks that gave him a hard time because he he come up another way and, and, and at times he, he felt like giving up but God, he just gritted his teeth and, and he was faithful and, and he came to church every time the doors were open and, and no matter what came against him or who didn't like it, he stood for truth. Amen. <laughs> Here he is, Lord. Here he is, Lord. Amen. And I don't know how, but somehow I'm going to have the privilege of taking a great man like this right here. And I'm going to say, Lord, when I was just a teenage boy, he would come to my house and take me for a ride in his car. And he'd say, son, you know you're not doing like you ought to be doing. Me and Sister Opal love you, son. You know what you need to do. You know you need to get right back with God. Oh, and one of these days I'm going to get to say, here's the one that made a difference in my life. And the Lord's going to say, come on in, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you rude over me. I don't know how it's going to go. But one of these days, I'm going to get to take old Miriam by the hand. And I'm going to get to take her before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm going to say, Lord, she caught a hard time in those young people at that high school. But Lord, she had her mind made up. She wasn't going back. She wasn't going to quit. She was going to stand for holiness. She was going to stand for this truth. She was going to stand for Jesus' name baptism. <laughs> He's going to say, well done, Miriam. My good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over I don't know. I've 
got to give an account before God one day. Come on, let's all stand. If you would, lift your hands to God. Come on, let's just feel after Him here a minute. Oh, come on, can we just call out to Him right now in prayer? Praise. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hear me today. Hear me today. Hallelujah. Just as depicted in this picture. That's going to be me one of these days. That's going to be you. the bridegroom I don't know how it all works out but Paul said we've got to give account as men of God obey them that have the rule over you for they watch for your soul as they that must give account One of two things are going to happen that day. I'll give account. And it's going to be joyful. Just like I represented with Miriam there. But could it be, Brother Mike, that those that were under the sound of my voice week after week, at least at one time or another, I say, Lord, y'all know I'm a salesman. I'll do the best I can. But I'll have to be truthful. I told her not to take that job. I told her not to move to that city. She's, she's really a good person. He's really a good person, God. But I have to be honest with you. I, I told her about that guy. Why did I tell you? So you wouldn't be happy. So you wouldn't make money. Did I tell you because I just didn't like the person? just didn't like that part of the country I watch for your soul and I may not know why I'm losing sleep over you I may not know why I feel so troubled but obey them I feel a sobering spirit standing up in me right now Would you close your eyes? Lord, you have your way right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. With your eyes closed, I want to tell you, I'm not your Lord. I'm not your God. I'm not your boss. I'm a friend of the bridegroom.
I'm not going to make up an altar call until I feel something from God. Jesus' name. Soon and very soon. Mm, you do what you feel in the Lord right now. I, I'm just not going. I can make up an altar call and have you come. I'm not going to do that. I may call you up here in just a minute. If the Lord lays something on my heart, you do what you feel in the Lord. In Jesus' name, stay in order and do what you feel in God. In Jesus' name, we got to be ready. We got to be ready. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King. Hallelujah.